Welcome to Beat Diabetes. I'm Dennis Pollock, and today we're going to continue to look at Dr. Benjamin Bickman's book called How Not to Get Sick. It is a follow-up on his previous book, oh, Why We Get Sick. And uh, in this case, it's about 60% exercises and recipes. So there's not a whole lot of info, but he does review and it, uh, what, it, what is involved in uh, why we get sick once again and has some good thoughts. I like Dr. Bickman. I call him doctor, but to be totally honest, he's not a medical doctor. He is a researcher. Bioenergetics, I think, is his Ph.D., uh, but he is a very sharp guy and has come squarely into the low carb camp. Uh, totally buys into the idea that we eat too many carbs, which of course is my position, Dr. Jason Fung's position, and so many others. Uh, we're going to look at the first official chapter. The other time we looked at his book, we covered the introduction. And in the first official chapter, chapter one, he asked the question, am I insulin resistant? Good question. Are you insulin resistant? And he makes the point that they did a test that involved looking at several different markers in a person's body and health. And they determined that about 88% of the people, the adults they tested, whether diabetic or not, were insulin resistant. Only 12% really passed with flying colors. And the things that they looked at were a waist circuf circumference. So if you've got a big tummy, uh, that's a, not a good sign that you could well be and probably are insulin resistant. Another one, obviously, blood glucose or blood sugar, as we sometimes call it. And if your blood sugar is too high and it's not normal, even if you haven't quite reached diabetic, you could still be insulin resistant with numbers that are too high. Thirdly, blood pressure goes hand in hand. Boy, I know that from my mom's experience. My mom was diabetic and she had incredibly high blood pressure. In fact, my sister told me in her latter years she was taking five different meds for blood pressure. And the truth is, if someone had looked at her blood pressure and her blood sugar, they would say her biggest problem was her blood pressure uh, because that was just way out of control. The blood sugar, they would give her a tablet. I don't even know what they gave her, but uh, she never did have to take insulin. Uh, and yet uh, she ended up with both her legs amputated. So she obviously had some severe problems, but she was strongly insulin resistant. Now, my dad, who was about nine years older than my mom, had excellent blood sugar, at least as far as I ever heard. No one ever called him diabetic for sure. And his blood pressure was so good that in his 80s, the doctor told him, you have the blood pressure of a teenager. Uh, he was thin. He, did, he sure didn't have much of a belly. Uh, but mom was on the plump side most of her life until her last couple of years, where I think she slimmed down a bit. And then another uh, thing that they looked at was two particular blood lipids. One would be the triglycerides. If you've got higher than normal triglycerides, that's a problem. And then the other one was the uh, LDL, dense particle LDL, not just any LDL. So they looked at those different things and uh, only 12% <laughs> of people, I don't know if this was in America, I guess it was, 12% uh, of those that were tested passed with flying colors. Everybody else had problems. So uh, what Dr. Bickman is saying is, uh, yeah, you've got uh, insulin resistance most likely. Now, I would say this, if you're watching this channel, Beat Diabetes, uh, it wouldn't be only 12% that are doing well. It'd probably be in, <laughs> in the single digits for sure, maybe five, 4%. Most people that watch this channel and let's face it, I, you know, this is not the most dynamic channel. I'm not the most dynamic guy and I'm not young and I'm not pretty, but they watch the cha this channel because they're desperate because they have serious problems. And if you're type two diabetic, uh, almost for certain, uh, well, that, that really is insulin resistance. So the question, the big question is, what does it matter? You know, is it just a term? And does it, does it even matter? Let's say you, you feel great. You feel really good and you don't notice any symptoms whatsoever. And yet you, you have a doctor check you and he says, yeah, you're definitely insulin resistant. 
Does that even matter as long as you feel good? And the answer is, yeah, it does, because it means you're headed for serious health problems. I wouldn't care if somebody called me insulin resistant and I knew that I was still healthy and I was going to be healthy the rest of my life until I finally drop over dead. I, I, that wouldn't bother me just to be labeled insulin resistant. But if somebody tells me, yeah, you're insulin resistant and what that means is your kidneys may well fail. Your eyes are probably going to go out on you to the point where you're almost blind. Uh, you're going to get all kinds of infections. You're going to have organ failures and you're going to have, you know, all these things uh, that would bother me. And that's unfortunately, that's the issue. The issue is not just being labeled insulin resistant. The issue is you're headed for trouble. And I have said before, and I'll say it again, the smartest people that watch my channel are those who say, I'm not diabetic. I'm not pre-diabetic, but I don't ever want to be diabetic. And that's why I watch your channel. And that's why I employ uh, the principles that you espouse. Well, to me, that is just smart. You see the danger ahead and you say, I don't want to ever go there. And you start preparing. So I, one of the ways you can tell if you're insulin resistant is, uh, the HOMA IR test, H O M A HOMA IR test. It's, it's actually stands for the homeostatic model assessment of insulin resistance. So, uh, a lot of fancy words. It measures your fasting insulin, but it compares it with your fasting glucose. So it's wanting to know how's your fasting insulin and how's your fasting glucose. And by looking at those two markers, it's determining just how seriously insulin resistant are you or maybe you're not at all. Uh, if your score is less than 2.0 on the HOMA IR test, then you're in good shape. You are um, almost no insulin resistance. If it's 2.0 to 2.9 moderate insulin resistance, and if it's greater than three moderate to severe, you got real problems. So again, the danger is in the insulin resistance, not necessarily because of how you feel today. You may feel just fine today, but in where you're going. Now, a lot of you that are watching this channel, you've already come into the danger zone. I mean, you're fully diabetic. You're having all kinds of health issues. You've got ulcers that, on your feet that, that won't heal. And uh, you've got all kinds of medical problems. So you're there. And, and for you, you may say, I, I don't care about that. I just want to know how to get my glucose lower. And one of the things Dr. Bickman says is, well, we, we always watch the glucose, but we should watch the fast, the, the fasting insulin more so than just the glucose, because glucose is kind of like when everything's falling apart, it's the end of the end for you healthy, uh, health wise, but the fasting insulin can tell you 10 or 15 years ahead of time where you're going. The problem with that is most people don't care about 10 or 15 years ahead of time. If you talk to the average 38 year old man and say, well, you know, based on your tests, you're headed for diabetes in another 15 or 20 years. Most likely that wouldn't even phase him. I mean, he'd think about it a little bit, but probably wouldn't make the kind of changes he needs to make because 10 or 15 or 20 years down the road just seems like an eternity for some people. And one of the reasons people beat diabetes and reverse their diabetes by watching channels like mine and others is the simple fact they're so mis miserable where they are and they're doing so poorly with all the diabetic complications and with the symptoms and with the doctor saying, you know, we may have to amputate your foot or your toe. Uh, you may need dialysis the way you're going with your kidneys and, and all kinds of issues that are threatening us. They're right up there in our face. And so, yeah, we're motivated. People like that are motivated. But if you're feeling just great, uh, it's going to be hard. It, if you're smart, you would be motivated. Now the HOMA IR is a, is a fine test to take. And I, I have to be honest, I'm not going to be a hypocrite and tell you I, I've taken it. I have never taken a HOMA IR. There is a poor man's insulin resistance test. You know, the HOMA IR is the one where you pay a little money for it unless you've got good health insurance. But the poor man's test is you eat a high carb meal and you test your glucose about an hour afterwards or hour and 15 minutes afterwards and you see how high it goes. 
The problem with a lot of doctors when they try to teach you how to test your glucose is they are only concerned with the two hour marker and their big issue is are you getting back down to baseline two hours after you eat your meal? And I'm not going to say that's not important, but for me, the bigger issue is how high are you spiking an hour after you eat your meal? Because even if you do get back to baseline in two hours or two and a half hours, if you're spiking too high, you're headed for trouble and you could possibly, uh, very, very possibly ha be having health complications before you ever become fully diabetic. So the poor man's insulin resistance test is eat a high carb meal, make sure there's a big baked potato in it, make sure there's some bread and maybe even a little dessert, eat a nice high carb meal and see where you go in an hour and 15 minutes. And if you can stay under 140, you're not very insulin resistant. I won't say you're not re insulin resistant at all, but you're not too bad. But if you eat a high carb meal and you jump up to 200, even if you make it down to 100 in two hours, if you are up at 200, 200 milligrams per deciliter in one hour after your meal, you've got problems and you could well have diabetic complications before you ever become fully diabetic. Let me say that again, rewind. You could well have diabetic complications before you ever become fully diabetic. How do I know that? Because I've been there. Before I was ever fully diabetic, I was having complications and yet my A1Cs, my fasting glucoses were not showing that I had all that much problem. But you've got problems. So the whole issue of insulin resistance is, is a good issue to tackle. And it is really the, the, the precursor of type two diabetes. When you have type two diabetes, you're insulin resistant. All right, but you're at the end of it all. You're, you're at the collapsing stage. Your body is collapsing, falling apart. Health issues are running at you like uh, roaring animals, roaring lions. And, uh, You've got to make some major changes in a hurry. But if you do it ahead of time, if you test yourself with a high carb meal, I dare you do it sometime. Have a high carb meal. Test yourself an hour after or hour and 15 minutes afterwards. And if you're jumping up anywhere close to 180 or 200, you need to take it to heart. I need to make some changes. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.